Hello, guys. I'm Tash. I'm Grant. Welcome to NDBNB. Today we talked to Crab Claw from down in Charleston, South Carolina. Uh, we enjoyed our conversation. Can't wait for y'all to hear. Had a hell of a time. Let's roll the tape. All right, guys, welcome into Indie B and B. Uh, we are here with Walker Troll of Crab Claw uh, of Charleston fame. Walker, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me on. We very appreciate you. Very much appreciate you coming on and making time for us. Um, you know, we love your music. Yeah, you know, I've seen you live. I've I've been to a. I was at a, a two slices show, which you know I'm repping right now. My boy Danny Martin. Uh, oh, yeah. grew up with him down in, up in Columbia. So, you know, I, I was able to get, get to one of your shows before the pandemic hit a couple of years ago in Atlanta. So, you know, I've loved you ever since, but, you know, want to start with your music videos, man. I love, you know, I, from Riverboat Ron to, <laughs> to Carcassonne to self-sabotage. I mean, you have such a variety and just awesome inspiration for your music videos. Tell me a little bit about like the creation of those and, and just where you get inspired from with those. Well, I uh, appreciate all the nice words. Thank you very much. Um, as far as the music videos go, um, I've always wanted to put music videos out with singles because, you know, I don't think people really like go on their phone when someone releases a single and like clicks it and goes to listen to it, you know, or right away. So I always kind of want a music video with my singles just so people can will watch it, you know, or listen to it. Yeah. So it's basically, uh, just a way to get the songs heard mainly i guess um and then you know we just like come up with an idea and usually do real gorilla style recording where we're, we're just um you know just usually me and another guy with the camera uh we'll go and just make something and, and throw it together on our laptops um it's turned out good with the exception of self-sabotage which we had an animator my friend uh his name's grant too actually uh, uh, he, he, he's in New York. York. Mm -hmm. um, he, uh, he, gotcha. What about like the, you know, the concept, you know, Riverboat Ron, I, it inspired my friends and I start a hot dog eating contest every year. I, you know, I, I know I, I communicate with you over, over Instagram about that, but, um, you know, what was the inspiration behind, you know, what the hell does Ron Rivera have to do with hot dogs, man, and, and going at it for it on fourth and one? Yeah, well, we knew we wanted it to be like a, uh, a competition or like we had the idea that we wanted the character played by me, Riverboat Ron, Avatar or whatever to be, uh, you know, training and competing in something. And we were just thinking like, you know, what would be funny and also like easy to film. Yeah. You know, we thought about like, you know, boxing and arm wrestling and all that kind of stuff. But we figured hot dog eating would be would be good. <laughs> and then <laughs> and then, yeah, I mean, it just, you know, it's good parallels with Ron going forward on fourth and stuff. Competition. Yeah. I bet you miss him up there in uh, up there in, in Carolina. I know he. I like he, Matt. I like uh, our new coach a lot. I think he's got chops. So we'll see. Need a quarterback, but I love Ron too. I think he'll do well in Washington. I mean, the guy beat cancer, and you know he's a hell of a hot dog eater. So I mean, nothing like yeah. it. Yeah, he's. I mean, no wonder he got leukemia or whatever all those damn hot dogs he's eating. <laughs> oh man. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, you got such awesome just an awesome catalog that you know we could go through and, and and you know starting from the beginning but like how did this this all get started you know from my understanding it's it's a super group but you know tell me a little bit about you know the inception and I know you work with Keon and and Wolfgang from from Brave Baby and you know obviously my buddy Danny is involved somehow so w w tell me all how all the pieces got together yeah well we you know have a pretty good community here in Charleston and um a lot of a lot of uh, musicians will kind of help out on all the projects, um, and you know I was a complete amateur uh, singing wise when we started, and uh, I just had some extra money lying around. And Wolfie at the time he didn't have a lot of money back then. He was just kind of getting his studio off the ground, 
here in Charleston. You know, he's really obviously very successful now. Um, but back in the day, you know, he was kind of broke. And, you know, I was waiting tables at the time. And, you know, waiting tables in Charleston had a lot of extra cash or whatever and no real responsibilities or uh, good budgeting habits. So I gave him some money to record our first song, um, which the first song, Carcassonne, was just like, you know, I could barely sing when we started to do that. And it's all tuned up and down, you know, through the whole thing. But years later, I feel like I'm finally a pretty decent singer, but back then I wasn't. Anyway, um, we just kind of all piled in and I, I had Christian, Helped me out. Him and I have been, you know, besties for a long, long time. And he helped out with the project and Woofy too. Um, we've just all been really good friends and kind of commune down here in Charleston and Crab Claw kind of got a little bit of a following. We just kept it rolling. So awesome. Awesome. Where'd you uh where'd you come up with Crab Claw? I mean, like I know it's you know, it's a great it's, it just grabs your attention. I mean, any anything you say, but where where'd that come from? Um, to be honest, I don't really remember exactly. I think it was, uh, I had this, we had this joke where I just had like a fuck ton of pseudonyms and then, um, you know, I always liked pseudonyms for some reason. I could just call myself whatever and people could know me as whatever. And they'd be like, Scooter, who's that? Or, you know, Walker, who's that? A crab claw or whatever. And, um, just being the same guy, but just have different names for different people who knew me. Um, and then Crab Claw was one of them because I bought this, like this, it wasn't foam, but it was like a, some sort of plastic, but a soft plastic, I guess rubber, probably rubber. Yeah. Uh, Crab Claw, and I was just like wearing around and first couple of shows, I had that. And then uh, we just called the band name that I, because. We couldn't find any any other band named Crab Claw, which I thought was funny. Um, so we just went with that. Was That's crazy. awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, you know, obviously, you know, we've gone through and and and, and I've, I've listened to all your stuff. And it seems like a music is kind of like a therapy for you. You know, take me through like kind of your songwriting process. I mean, it, what is yeah. what does it look like? You know, I think you draw on a lot of different experience. So what's kind of your main inspiration in, in, in going and creating your songs? Well, the process is um, pretty typical for us. Um, usually I go in with like a hook or like a, sometimes even as little as a, a song title, which was the case for uh, Nose Beers. Yeah. Um, and then we just kind of flesh the song out from there in studio. And then I'll have a sound kind of like what I, what I think I want it to sound like slash an inspiration. Um, and then I'll talk to Wolfie and Christian and uh, say like, hey, this is what I, kind of what I'm thinking for this, this track named Nose Beers or whatever. I kind of want it to sound like, you know, Led Zeppelin or, or whatever, or, or whatever the case may be that um, for that particular song. And then while they're fleshing out the tracks, usually we'll live track drums and guitar from those two guys. And they'll track the whole thing, the whole format of the whole song, usually figure the format out, you know, like verse, chorus, mm -hmm. uh, guitar solo, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, or whatever. And then they'll track the whole thing live, sometimes to a click, sometimes not, um, with drums and guitar. Uh, usually just a rhythm placeholder guitar and then the drums and then while they're doing that I'm kind of figuring out the, uh, the melody and the verses and the lyrics mm -hmm. um, typically from like a story that I already had already knew so all I have to do is basically just make it fit um, and sound good and rhyme you know yeah and uh, yeah usually that's how we do do it and then uh, we'll dub in the bass direct in and uh, Christian will overdub more guitar. And then sometimes, about half the time, we'll have another guy in there doing keys. Sometimes that'll be um, Dylan Dawkins of Persona Lab or uh, Corey Campbell, who played with Susto and now Bass Club or Babe Club. Um, Steven 
who plays with Susto now, or, you know, when he played with Brady Baby or Johnny Delaware, um, any number of different keys, guys. Paul Kalmus of uh, uh, Human Resources helped out, and Ross Bogan, who's really, uh, really good uh, keys player here in Charleston, has helped out all in the keys. So they'll kind of sometimes add more like jazzy uh, elements, more like um, artisanal chords or whatever to the uh, to the songs and make it give it a little more classical cred or music nerd cred or whatever to it. <laughs> I got you. And, uh, and then, yeah, and then we'll just dub in the vocals last after I get the whole song figured out. And then some of the, you know, some of the lyrics aren't even finished till after we start dubbing the, vo the box in, you know. Gotcha. Um, you know, as far as like a song like Titties at Noon, I mean, like, is that just, was that inspired by a pair of titties that you, that you saw at yeah. noon? Or I mean, like, what? Uh... Was, um, well, that, the, uh, <laughs> the hook for that song, actually, Johnny Delaware, uh had this little stupid song that he would do called sucking on some titties and milk and he would just say sucking on some titties and milk sucking on some titties and milk and um you know i was on tinder a lot of the time kind of running around charleston in my early 20s you know basically being a fuck boy or whatever yeah, as you do as you do <laughs> which was always it's always cool and uh you know we were just like, well, song's kind of about like during the day, sex with your Tinder girl or whatever. And uh, yeah, pretty much that. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I mean, it's, you can't help but listen to your music and put a smile. It, it, it can't help but put a smile on your face. You know, even, you know, in all your stuff, it's just like, <laughs> I, it, Tash called me during the day today. He's like, dude, we might have to like edit this thing because we, we can't be talking about with him a lot of stuff we could talk about. Um, yeah. Y'all can edit whatever. If I if I say too many curses, <laughs> oh no no no, we we're just we we're just talking just <laughs> just in general with us. We're like, yeah, shit. Like, <laughs> I got I got to be careful. We got to be careful what we're what we're partying and talking about on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. But like you know, tell me about you know. I, obviously it seems like you guys have a great scene down there i mean like what is it seems like the royal american is that like kind of the heart of y'all's of the music scene down in charleston and like where is that kind of where crab claw would you would you call your that your home base or yeah definitely i mean we played there more than any anywhere else for sure um definitely home base at least for our little little group i mean the community is bigger than it's gotten a lot more homogenized recently in the past couple of years Mm -hmm. you know between like you know the, the hip-hop scene or whatever and uh the more jammy scene uh that hang out more at the poorhouse um which is across the bridge um it's become more homogenized recently and we've all kind of come together but it used to be um you know just our little group we're kind of dominating the indie scene or whatever yeah. around here um and Royal American was definitely the base, the home base for sure. We'd always put our album release shows there and um, yeah. And definitely part of the, the family, all those, all those guys, John Kenny, the Royal owner. Um, he's really been super supportive of all of us. Um, we can, yeah, we can get a show there whenever, just text them. And that's always been super cool. That's awesome. It's always good to have, you know, kind of like that, that place where you can go and you always be able to play a live show, you know, speaking of that, I mean, what's your, what's it look like, you know, moving forward? Of course we are, we are down here in you know, the Southern part of the United States and it seems like things are a little bit more open here. I mean, are you guys looking to play live soon or, you know, what's that look like? I'm hoping we can play a show soon. I'm trying to get all of us, all of it together, you know, mm -hmm. um, all the other guys, are uh they have their own projects and stuff too so sometimes it's hard to coordinate everybody together all at once which has made touring touring difficult obviously in the past but um yeah i'm i'm, I'm looking at like, like june or something mm -hmm. you know uh, maybe royal we've been talking with the commodore which is a super sweet place on the east side um they have like it's like kind of club club vibes, an old black club um, that 
has basically been retrofitted. But it's it's cool, man. It's really cool in there. They have yeah, awesome. awesome bands in there every, every night. So. Nice, nice. Yeah, well, what I mean, like, I guess, what have you been, uh, you know, up to as far as, you know, obviously, when the world ended last year in, in March, I mean, you know, have you just been concentrating on writing music? What is, you know, what does that look like for you? We've been writing, I mean, we've got a lot of stuff for the third album already done. Um, I'm getting back in there in a couple of weeks, I think two weeks from today, actually. Two weeks from tomorrow, we're getting back in there for two days, I think. Um, and you know just gonna do it a, a little bit more but we just record a little bit at a time you know I'm not in any hurry mm -hmm. and um, mainly since COVID I've been I've been going back to get my bachelor's which has been shitty I hate it dude it sucks school sucks <laughs> but uh, get my get my get my bachelor's in in marketing so well, you certainly know how to do that, uh, you know, especially I'm sure you've learned a ton from just being a, you know, being an independent artist and, and trying to figure out how to, you know, create a t-shirt that's going to sell. I mean, you know, and the LaCroix boy shirt, I think it may be the most clever and awesome thing. I'm a big Croy guy, so I really love. Love LaCroix. <laughs> yeah, that's done really well, man. I'm surprised, you know, I, I, it started as a parody of uh, Acid Boys which is uh, Justin from Susto's uh, record label and, and clothing brand, you know, Acid Boys. I was like, you know, LaCroix Boys. You know, it's like PG <laughs> <laughs> parody of it. But, I mean, it's done great. You know, I think we did like 20000 last year or something just on our merch website, which is super cool, you know, for me. Yeah. Because I get to keep it all or whatever. And, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been great. I mean, we've – I've messed with some like my other designs or whatever, and I've, I've had this. We've got a couple more coming, um, but yeah, it's definitely a little extra side gig. It's been pretty sweet. Yeah, definitely. I mean, being able to get get a little more, you know, always always trying to have some more streams for sure. Um, you know, yeah. want to know about you know the obviously the, the the second album seems like it was very very personal um, and and definitely something that every song is unique on it. You know, you, you can go from kind of a more rock and roll vibe to a little bit more of a country ballad vibe. I mean, what, like, I guess, what artists would you say kind of influence you on, hey, like, you know, this one feels a little bit more like a George Jones or, a, you know, a, a, a country vibe versus, you know, this one feels more like, hey, let's get in your face and, and kind of have a huge bridge. Like, you know, like, um, you know, Father's Day is kind of a little bit more of a, you know, relaxed vibe. So tell me a little bit more about the, you know, your influences, you know, from other you know, artists and who, you know, who has been your biggest, biggest one there? Well, um, I always say Crab Claw is definitely like very inspired by Queen. Obviously, if you can um, hear the guitar, you know, and, and everything. Um Weezer is another big influence. Uh, and then I, 90s country. I, if I had to pick three, those those three things, 90s country just being like, you know, any like kind of mid 90s pop country, you know. Uh, those are definitely the biggest influences, probably all, all mashed up. And, you know, I don't have like, any particular genre that I feel like Crab Claw should be necessarily. I mean, it's definitely a loose, bl it's blanketed like loosely it's rock music, you know? Yeah. But, um, you know, I'm always down to mess around. I like all kinds of music. So um, if I could pull off hip hop at all, then we would try that. But I think it would probably wouldn't sound that good. So. <laughs> gotcha. Tash, I can't hear you, brother. No. Nope. Should be out of this episode. There you go. There you go. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. That okay. And he's gone. 
<laughs> yeah. Classic Zoom. I mean, geez. Can you hear we can talk now? How about now? Yeah. I thought y'all were just ignoring me the whole time. Gosh. <laughs> you been talking the whole time? Yeah, I've been like trying to chime in and I was like, damn, Grant's just, you know, dominating me here. But oh, no. I, hear so I was <laughs> oh man. That's the first technical difficulty we've ever had. But to get back, when you said Weezer, I was like, literally that song, I let it rest. I was like, this sounds like if Weezer grew up in the South. So I'm glad that I was picking yeah. up on that. Yeah, that was definitely very, uh, very much contrived Weezer. Like we knew it was going to sound like Weezer and we were like, and then Christian's such a good guitar player, like as far as, um, his tones are concerned. Mm -hmm. Like if you give him an idea of what you want it to sound like, he will just, that tone will be there. Like it'll be the straight up same one, you know, like between the country tones, you know, the Brian May queen. Yeah. Our tones and, you know, and, and Weezer and let it rest or whatever. Um, you just he'll make it sound exactly like that guitar, which is super cool. Yeah, and I love how y'all just, y'all blend. I mean, it, it can be from song to song, just blending genres over over the top of each other. And I, I love that y'all don't have any, there's no borders in y'all's band. Y'all just let it flow and let it ride and yeah. come That's out with an amazing sound. Testament to those guys, man. Like, they just, uh, they make it sound like that, you know. Testament to Wolfie to be able to put it all together like that, too. I mean, it's definitely all mostly, like, rock rock based, even mm -hmm. the country, country ones. But um, yeah, man, for sure. I think it's super cool because I love all that different type of stuff. And um, basically anything with like a hooky chorus and like some guitar, I, I really like. So yeah, um, pretty much that's like the common denominator, and the, the rest of the the tones and stuff can just be whatever. Yeah, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Well, it's definitely working. And uh, I wish when y'all were talking about merchandise, I'm, you missed out on a great Grant story. Uh, Grant once threw up off a single uh, LaCroix. It got real, real messed up in the head. And I uh, <laughs> threw up on a LaCroix one time. I was trying to chime that in there, but y'all couldn't hear me. <laughs> we, uh, they're all right. Like, they go, I, I was like, I drank something and then I drank a LaCroix after and I drank it too fast and just got over bubbled. And I mean, yeah, it yeah. Was, I, I can see how that could happen. Uh, you know, I've shotgunned a couple of LaCroix that, that didn't go that well either. Um, you know, yeah, it seems too, like they, too much uh, effervescence for a shot guy, I think. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes just, I, sometimes I'll even let them sit for, a, for 10 minutes before I, I take a huge swaller. <laughs> like a, a nice untapped LaCroix. <laughs> a tapped LaCroix. It's already it's already been cracked a little bit. It's like an 18 wheeler. You gotta let the tire pressure out or the brake <laughs> pressure out before you, you know, put it in park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, kind of getting back to those music videos. When you did Father's Day, I mean, are you burning that? I mean, y'all burning that actual motorcycle? I mean, like, and how many it looked like you threw like the perfect shot of whatever that glass thing was, right? I mean, it, it looked like you were a major league yeah, pitcher. I fucking nailed it. <laughs> no, that was uh, that was one take, you know. I mean, we only had one take, right? Um, I only made one mullet of cocktail and only had one beater motorcycle to set on fire. So I fucking nailed it. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I was I, that's like the first I was like holy shit did they did this in one thing or they did this in post I gotta know because you know, players was, make big time plays man <laughs> yeah no I just I'm a natural athlete I played baseball growing up or whatever and just uh I knew I only had one shot and I was just you know trying not to fuck up and like drop the all the burning gasoline near me or or whatever you know and I was like all right well don't fuck it up and then uh our friend rich who he owns american biker which is an indian dealership uh up on 26 and it passed north charleston and he set us up with that uh the bike was totally totally worthless by the way yeah. we didn't set we didn't set anything on fire that had any value to anyone um 
and you know he he uh showed me how to do it and we got the the rag all nice and soaked up with the gas and uh he said you know just light it and you have like several seconds to throw it so like don't get all panicky and like light it and then throw it right away like um so i just you know lit it and i chilled for a second and fucking threw it like a baseball it was a claus and uh pickle jar okay it was like a good size and good like you know ball kind of throwing so i mean you just get those those things you can just feel like you can throw and like that was like you just fucking (laughs) loved it yeah yeah and thank god they got the uh the shot you know i had um Dale and a uh, persona I have, he's a videographer, musician, kind of jack of all trades fellow here in town who does some like VHS recordings, which we did that with the, um, the home videos uh, that we had for Father's Day. And he was like on a chair behind me, like for the over the shoulder shot with the VHS. And then, yeah, he just, he got the shot, you know, it was great. We had one shot and we got it, which is really, really cool because it made the video for sure yeah what um you know you know speaking of your videos i mean do you still have the the scooter i mean like is that something you actually you know ride around charleston i mean and 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 is that how you get around the scooter oh yeah yeah it's um i've had i've had two uh vespas they're you know italian made super nice bikes and very extremely reliable and beautiful bikes and um i got a 350 now a black one um so it can get going too you know i mean i've got it up to 80 i've taken it to savannah before oh my god yeah i mean it, they're they're um they have the scooter body style but um they're definitely not like a moped or a little scooter that you picture in your um in your head you know like they're they can get going they got a lot of a lot of horsepower um and i love that fucking thing man like i'll I'll never own another kind of bike i don't think i just love the vespas they're so reliable so beautiful you know start right up every time just really great bikes they have they hold their value too like um some of the older ones you can sell for even more than you bought them back in the day new wow um they're just really really good bikes and i love i love my vespa gotcha Gotcha. Scoot Scoot is an anthem of our generation. <laughs> I love, that was my favorite song of yours, going through your whole yeah. catalog. Yeah. Such a good beat vibe song. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, that song we sampled uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Um, yes. Is that the did it? Yeah. Oh it's Hilltop Zone, which is like Zone 5, like Level 5. And um, we sampled that and then basically built the whole song um, based off of that. Wow. So, which that. I think was the Quincy Jones track. So that's why it's so good. It's because like Quincy Jones wrote Scoot Scoot pretty much. <laughs> I mean, you, uh, and speaking of games, I mean, you're a, I'm, I, you know, I'm on your Instagram and, you know, I, I watch your stories. Obviously you're, you're, a, you're the number one rated um, Magic the Gathering player in the world. I mean, Last what got season, you into that? <laughs> last season, I was number one, yeah. Which was so cool, man. Like, I'm, I've always known of, I'm like, I'm, I've always been a really good Magic player. But I've never, like, quite broken through to, like, professional level where I, like, making, like, money playing or whatever. Um, so, which is sometimes depressing, you know, when you're, like, know you're really good at something, but you haven't been able to devote that much time or – um, dedication to something that you know you're actually really good at. Yeah. Um, so hitting number one was super cool, man. It was. Um, so you get paid really player, So it was it was really cool. Do you think you could do it professionally? Well, the professional, the uh, uh, competitive play, organized play has changed a lot with COVID and everything, and it's there's not really a lot going on right now as, as much as there used to be back when I was in college before um, you could travel every weekend and play in tournaments all over the place and you know make money and then go to the next one and and wow. they depending on how well you do you get 
flight vouchers and stuff. It was super cool. And then you could win, if you win the big one, you know, you could go home with like $100,000 or whatever. Jeez. Jeez. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, these days it's a little different. Like now it's more uh, aimed at uh, content creators, like people who stream on Twitch and YouTube. And that's kind of how, where the money is now in playing magic which is cool i mean i'll be interested in doing something like that um you know but i just have a lot on my plate so it's like it's really like what what do i want to do you know it's like do i want to just like drop a lot of stuff in order to do that because that's like a real time consuming thing you know like i can't just kind of half-ass that i'd have to like be on there every day yeah um which will be the dream, kind of, for me. I love playing the game. <laughs> but, you know, it's just like, I don't know. Maybe I should do it. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, any, it seems like anything you do, you, you do it you do it full send, and, and it, it seems like that's kind of a theme for you, uh, you know, within your life. I mean, I, I, I love the fact that, you, you know, your, your war against ampersands is the thing that, you know, really – really intrigues me i mean what is the what's the deal with that <laughs> and, and i just think it's so dumb how every restaurant that comes out these days is like two nouns and with it separated by an ampersand it's like can you guys not be more creative than that they like want to they want to be like super mod and cool like sounding restaurant or whatever but they end up just sounding like every other fucking thing that's come out like the past two years you know <laughs> Is there one restaurant in particular that really just? That... Dude, man, there are dozens of them. Next time, next time you're thinking about it, like look around Atlanta and 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 uh, at all the restaurants that are just two nouns separated by an ampersand. I've got it's two in my head already. I won't say them. Yeah, I won't say the names of the actual. But restaurants. I've got two in my head that, as soon as you said that, I was but, like, wow. <laughs> but now, as a general rule, I won't eat at those places. Gotcha. Gotcha. That's he, he, just for the out of the, the the lack of creativity for the name, and I love that. That's a well, you know, it shows also in their lack of creativity throughout the whole thing. You know, I just, yeah. I, just I want to eat there. They you definitely know? are the and ones that have like light bulb just hanging down over the table, like every other. Yeah, you got idea. yeah it's like that same shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, well. Last thing I had, you know, obviously before we kind of wrap this up in the, into Pete Peterson's, you know, party pack of questions, you know, all these people who, you know, are in your music videos, you know, it just seems like you have just a different cast of characters every single time. Um, you know, the girl who eats your heart in Carcassonne is different than the girl who's in Riverboat Ron, who's different than the one who's, you know, the ones that are in, um, you know, your, you know, you know, Father's Day video. So like, you know, are these just all your friends or are these people who, you know, just are around the community in Charleston and, and just kind of yeah. you know, talk about the relationship? Yeah. Um, a lot of uh, people are my friends who've helped me out, you know, being in the music videos, talented people. I've been in a lot of them and, um, you know, we hired a dance group for Father's Day. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll just, ask girls on Instagram or whatever, if I need like a girl for a certain role, um, usually they're stuck to do it, you know, and um, they usually work. I mean, I've never really gone through like an agency for any of any of that, yeah. so, you know, really so been very gorilla. I like that. I like that. Well, I hope to see you soon in a, uh, I need to, I need to get you in a two slices video. I think you, you would fit, you know, perfectly with Danny's, you know, dance grooves and, and getting, yeah. getting funky with him. Yeah, man. I mean, I would love to play a heel or something in uh, one of his videos. Yeah. Um, you know, I was, I, I grew up with Danny in, uh, in Columbia. And so like his first band on or off, my brother's best friend was in it, Mike. And then, um, you know, I saw him at North river tavern with, um, Oh, what was the band after on or off it was um the one he had just before he got got into two slices um but i bet you know i paid close attention to him and just you know obviously growing up with him i i you know i've known him for a while um and i'm so glad that he you know that i got and you know got to see you and got to see uh got to see two slices live and then you know i've seen him since then um and, and yeah him and laser cat crush it and you know it's just a, a awesome yeah, community amazing. They're amazing. I love them. Guys, let me turn this TV off. Sorry, it's loud. Very good. I didn't. It was, the previous video was not loud, and this one was loud. <laughs> All right. 
Sorry about that. No worries. All good. All good. All right, well, let's get into it here. We're going to do uh, Pete Peterson's potty pack of questions. It's uh, 20 questions in a row, rapid fire style. So, you know, as soon as you're done answering, I'm going to ask the next one. Um, so if you're ready, we'll get on, get right into it. I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, here we go. Pop-Tarts or toaster strudels? Uh, neither. Do I have Spear to pick? Yeah, you got to pick. Oh, toaster strudel. Toaster Spearmint or peppermint? Uh, spearmint. How do you take your eggs? Over easy. Bud Light or PBR? Bud Light. Your go-to spot to eat in Charleston? Um, the rare bit. Is Bigfoot real? No. Are aliens real? Yes. Are robots going to take over the world? Uh, eventually. The best concert you've ever been to? Um, Arcade Fire at the Gorge. Country you would like to visit? Japan. The best job you've had outside of music? Mm, uh... Probably my current job at Bangkok Lounge, um, karaoke bar, bartender. Favorite pie? Uh, pumpkin pie. Your go-to late night snack? Popcorn. What are you vibing on recently? You know, what artists do we need to know about down in Charleston? What local artists? Yeah. Um. I'm stoked for the new Susto record. Um, been listening to some of their demos. It's really good. Um, other than that, Babe Club, friend Corey Campbell and Jenna's band, and um, my friend Dylan uh, does some lo-fi pad tunes called Persona La Ave. And that stuff is always really, really good. And he puts music out all the time. Nice, nice. That's good stuff. Dogs or cats? Uh, dogs. Your go-to emoji on the keyboard? Um, the, uh, the think face. Uh, think face guy. Yeah. All right. The best concert t-shirt you own? Concert t-shirt. I got this super cool uh, uh, Jerry um, Jerry Lewis shirt, long sleeve. Oh yeah, yeah. Nice day drinking or drinking all night. Say again. Day drinking or drinking all night. Uh, day drinking is preferable if you if you know, if the option is there. Gotcha. Carrots or celery with your wings. Celery. Sunrise or sunset? Sunrise. And that has been Pete Peterson's party pack of questions. Crab Claw, thank you so much for, for indulging yeah. us and answering those. Um, yeah, of course. We can't wait to see you. As soon as you can get back on the road, we will be in the front row. Hell yeah, man. Hopefully we can do that soon, you know. Hopefully yeah. soon. You guys both live in Atlanta? Yeah yeah we'll definitely be back in atlanta for sure we will be there front we'll neighborhood theater or something like that or that's an athlete that's athens um what is uh what is that place called um dude you could play smith's on the I east think. side uh the earl the earl yeah god dude you got it i've got kicked <laughs> i got too drunk at the earl and got kicked out of there i mean i, I don't know you allowed back yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I just got cut off. They were like, yeah, man, why don't you just have some water? And I was like, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I was at a concert that, like, was not uh, not the same vibe as I was having for the evening. Lucy Dacus and, you know, the the whiskey I drank didn't, didn't mix very well. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, dude, um, the Earl's awesome, man. Uh, I would say, dude, Smith's old bar, if you can, is good work if you can get it. They did, they're yeah. renovating that whole place. Um, okay, I'm not familiar with that place. I'll have to check it out. 
yeah i i used to know the bookers but they all they've all kind of moved on um and uh but yeah man. A, lot of, a lot of good places in atlanta yeah danny danny then played vinyl with pip the pansy um oh they they're, played, they're awesome she's awesome yeah dude, that was a sick show i we had a really good time but yeah they they played there um which is all, right off west Peachtree. so i mean there's a, just a ton of places and um i i would I'd love to see you guys with, you know, with Brave Baby or, you know, with, with, uh, you know, get, get your y'all's whole crew together and do like a tour of, uh, you know, yeah. Southeast. That'd be sick, man. We've done a, a couple Charleston tours. We did a uh, one in uh, Iowa or two in Iowa, but there was one, one, uh, basically Charleston music festival that Susto put on mm -hmm. with all Charleston bands um in Makoka to Iowa which is like an hour and a half out of uh Cedar Rapids which is completely middle of nowhere but it just uh all Charleston bands for uh, two nights and this uh place called the Codfish Hollow in Iowa and it's I cannot, cannot wait to play there again that place is amazing if you ever get a chance to to go there if you're ever at, uh, up there and there's a show nearby you should absolutely go wow what an awesome like well whose connection was it to iowa uh justin from susto had played there had played there before and they're just super cool people and um yeah and then people come from all over that little tri-state area to see shows there and um packed it out two nights just charleston bands it was super bizarre but surreal you know it was really cool Awesome. Who'd, have thought, who'd have thought iowa and charleston the, the connection that's that's the awesome. connection there i don't know <laughs> um but yeah we should definitely do a um southeast thing like that that'd be dope yeah i mean we'll, we'll, be, we'll be there with bells on man and we you know we we just we, we're gonna help you any way we can with our you know just trying to explain your footprint obviously you know my friends had no idea who you were until i i turned on the riverboat ron video and my buddy langston <laughs> my buddy langston vaughn who's won the hot dog eating contest four times in a row now um we started calling him riverboat vaughn <laughs> and, and so like it's like a you know for, for us we have that yearly so it's like a you know there's 13 or you know 10 to 13 of us that do it and just like yearly vaughn's coming in and and he just he flexes on us every year um but it's a it's it's been a joy to like kind of you know your music video inspired an, an event that we have now you know so wanted to make sure i shared that with you and just how you know how awesome it is to 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 meet you finally and and yeah. glad that we've uh we're able to talk to you yeah i love to hear that man it was a pleasure to meet you guys too